taken just two and three minutes before his life was cut short. There are brand new images of a man who was shot right outside the Dane County Jail. These pictures are part of the court records we obtained for tonight's story. We want to caution you, some of these images are hard to see. Thanks, thanks so much for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Mark McPherson. What we know now is that the shooting is gang related and the result of a paid hitman at work. Tonight, NBC 15 investigates Michelle Beck reports on the issue and the impact of gangs in our community. Before his death on a rainy spring day, Dwayne Collins Jr. stood on the narrow street downtown between the jail and the Madison police station. Cops and commuters out and about. Collins was supposed to get picked up by his mother. It was March 30th, 2022. It is very brazen. It's something that's very concerning. One moment built up by years of crime after crime. It should be concerning to everyone. 4.58 p.m. is the first time we see Collins on Carroll Street. Notice in the background a blue SUV parked facing out. It's that vehicle less than 60 seconds later that darts into the frame. Watch a man jump out before the car even stops. With nothing between him and his target. That's when we heard just like a... He shoots. Pop, pop, pop. It's 4.59 p.m. and Dwayne Collins falls to the ground. The killer vanishes and in his shadows is Collins' mother, Angela Briggs. She washed it all from the driver's seat. To have to pick my child head up to try to comfort him and to see blood running down him. That's something I cannot take back out my head. After seasons have passed. You know, and I'm still, I'm still puzzled today. What did he do? The man who gave Collins <laughs> his own name. Wow. Speaks out in his first television interview. What did he do that they deserve to lose his life? Dwayne Collins Sr. You know? wonders how his son died by the hands of a boy he knew from years ago. Amand Galtney, his son's childhood friend, drove the SUV. We knew you. You were like family. In June, Galtney was sentenced to life in prison. You've been to our home. You've eaten at our table. Sharing the fate of Damone Cummins, who fired the gun. Prosecutors believe Cummins was a paid hitman from Chicago. How do you make sense of the fact that the prosecutor, Bill Brown, he said it was gang violence, it was retaliation? That's what I don't understand. I'm from a gang. Dwayne Collins Sr. left that life behind when he moved from Chicago to Madison. I get on him, you know, because I don't want him, I did never want him to have the kind of lifestyle that I had. But decades after he left the Windy City, Chicago remains criminally tied to Madison. In fact, the deputy district attorney revealed at Cummins sentencing the number of connected killings since 2016. There have been probably between 8 to 10 homicides between Madison and Chicago where people have been shot, uh, a lot of people injured, um, a lot of people dead. William Brown said two rival gangs have gone back and forth. His evidence includes a rap song Galtney produced a month before the shooting outside the jail. The track, titled Back to Back, is all about evening the scorecard, according to the prosecutor. That feud supposedly started seven years ago with a fatal shooting outside a pub on Madison's west side. I think the vast majority of people who live in Madison do not operate with the understanding that there are somewhat lethal street gangs operating amongst us. So is the public safe? Um, I think, I mean, Madison is a safe place. Um, I, uh, I love Madison, I love policing here, um, and so I believe Madison to be safe, but I think um, we, we have a gang problem. Justin Nelson is a Madison police sergeant in the gang unit. Given the closeness to Chicago, Madison, he says, has a lot of the same gangs that the metropolis has, just in a smaller level. What's different here is that gangs don't have boundaries they protect as their own. Could hang out with someone from even a rival gang. Um, people kind of move back and, back and forth uh, depending on what's important to them. And lately, without clear territories in the state capitol, Sergeant Nelson says gang members live anywhere. Depending on their motivations and what they're looking to do, uh, anyone can be a victim of them. The consequences of the crime include the innocent getting caught in the crossfire. All in all, he didn't deserve it. No, he didn't. Parents losing their children. No, he didn't. You know? And children. I've seen as young as 10 losing control of their futures. I think that's a heartbreaking thing, especially for police officers, is that, you know, like building those relationships, knowing them, seeing kind of what the product of, of um, gang life and gang culture uh, can, uh, can result in. As Dwayne Collins' killers serve their sentences. You know, I, 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 I forgive them. 
I forgive them. This father prays for the lives outside prison. You can stop before you react. You, you, you got a conscience. That the lives inside gangs are left behind. It's interesting. I don't think most people know just how much of a connection there is between Madison and Chicago gangs. NBC 15's Michelle Beck joins us now. Michelle, we've reported on stolen cars and violent crimes that police have connected to gangs. What's their current strategy to tackle all of this? Well, there's really four things. Sergeant Nelson and his unit work towards these pillars, prevention, intervention, reintegration, and suppression. Relationship building is a huge aspect of these. It's a big job. Dwayne Collins' his father, what does he have to say about all this? Yeah, well, as a father, he believes parents and parent figures have a lot of influence when they're involved in their children's lives. Michelle Beck, thanks for the reporting.